bike test. All right, we are in Mali at the Senu Airport. What is this airport actually called? Resident Modibo Kaita, Senu International, in Bamako, Mali. About to uh, head out towards um, Burkina Faso. About an hour-long flight. It's uh, about 6 p.m. local time. So, it should be a nice, pleasant flight. The weather actually looks pretty decent. Uh, I have forgotten which runway we're going to be taking off. Let me just have a quick look. Runway 24, which is to our right back there. We're not even going to need push pack because we can just turn around. That doesn't seem like this is the right profile. What's going on, Trek IR? <laughs> That's the right profile. Okay. Let's get ourselves up and running here today. So we want the battery master on. Emergency lights to armed. Standby display switch on. Avionics switch to dispatch mode. Parking brake is set. Can we do a passenger briefing? Let's do a passenger briefing. Let's do the short takeoff one. Ensure your seat is in the upright and outboard position. Extend your headrest and fasten your lap belt and shoulder harness. Thank you. Let me go to make sure we have ground power so we don't run out of juice at any point. Um, beacon and seatbelt signs. May I have your attention, please? At this time, please comply with the illuminated seatbelt and no smoking signs. Thank you. Okay, let's get our the departure is easy. That's just runway 24. Let's set our arrival while we're here. Um, our arrival is going to be RNAV runway 22. RNAV 22. Um, K 
carrot transition and the star is Tixo 1k. Execute that. Let's have a quick look and deal with any discontinuities. There's one. Let's clear that. And if we switch this down to plan mode real quick, we can step through the waypoints just to make sure this all looks reasonably good. Yep, that looks pretty perfect. Actually, it looks like we might have Carrot in there twice. Let me have a look. That tends to happen. Oops. Uh, yeah, we can remove one of them. There we go. Go back to this menu. Okay, that's our... Um, what do I got to do our performance? Take off. Ah, we don't have any actual ATIS. Uh, let's assume the wind is calm. And it's definitely dry. We will do a flaps 15 takeoff. What else are we missing here? Oh, temperature. Um, let's assume it's about 20 degrees. That should be close enough. That gets us our V speeds. There we go. Now we're all set. Let's see FMS done. Takeoff data verified. Beacon, seatbelt signs on, altimeter set. We are ready for engine start. What's happening? Like I are being fancy full today. Okay. Um, let's uh, start an engine. one engine going. Let's get the second one going. Get the avionics switched to on now. Good engines, <coughs> nav lights, <coughs> and taxi lights. Um, climate select, climate control, normal. Let's get the AC going. 
We won't be needing your services today, sir. Thank you very much, though. Um, okay. Let's go taxi to runway 24. Parking brake is off. Take taxiway Bravo down to Delta. Assuming that this is modeled the way it is on the chart, doesn't quite look like it. That doesn't really look like it at all. It's just not match the chart. According to the chart, we should be able to keep going straight here. We cannot, so we will turn around and taxi along what is actually here. We will be taken off in the opposite direction of our actual travel. Then we're going to swing around to a 180 degree left turn before getting ourselves back on, on course. We taxi down, then we can have a look. We need the uh, pedo heats on for takeoff. There we go. Flaps, we will go to flaps one. Trims set for takeoff. Three times. Screw briefing is complete. TCAS, we will go to TR, T A R A. Uh, and we will go and squawk more Charlie, already done. We're tuned into the Unicom frequency. Radar and terrain, we'll weather is on. Taxi lights are on. Uh, landing lights are going to come on in a moment. We'll switch taxi lights off, landing lights on. Strope is on. Go around button to go for takeoff. We can do that now. That's our flight director on.
get lined up and we'll get ready to go here. Okay. Takeoffs for throttle, brakes released, that's all we gotta go. Everything else is all set. Everything there is looking good. Switch this to the legs. Once we get airborne, we will switch over to flight level change at 240 knots. Um, let's say we are going to climb to an initial altitude of 10,000 feet. And after that, we will, what is our filed flight? Flight plan, altitude, cruise altitude of 410. Start recording in four flight and we're all set. Sip of coffee and we'll get going. All right, here we go. There's bits alive. And rotate. Positive climb, gear up. Try to align our pitch here with the flight director. Good, we'll initiate our left turn. Flaps can come up now. Pull back a bit to go down into the climb detent. There we go. Bye-bye, airport. This is such a rocket ship, it's awesome. Flight level change at 240 knots. Pilot. Oh no, I didn't want heading, I want nav, okay. Good, but we're on heading with nav mode armed, which is actually kind of perfect. Because we got us on an intercept course, and then we should switch over to nav here momentarily, automatically, to LNAV-1. We're almost at 10,000 feet already. Altitude. Bye, Mally. It's been a pleasure. Nice seeing you during the daytime. All right, flight level 410. Landing lights can come off. We can switch to standard altimeter above 10,000. LNAF is armed and we are turning on course. After takeoff checklist, landing gear retracted, flaps zero, throttles on climb, yaw damper is on, autopilot engaged, ice protection not required, passenger safety lights as required, landing lights off, altimeter is set and cross checked.
Oh, you can now unlock your phone with your watch when it detects a mask. Yes, please. I love that. That's great. Starting to get to the point where masks will not be even... Yeah, well, I guess it'll be necessary indoors for quite a while. E3 starts tomorrow? What? All right, everything's been great. This plane is such a joy to fly. Once you get past the takeoff, a little bit of hand flying, and then uh, just um, keep an eye on the speed. Make sure you pitch for it, because it is a rocket ship, so you got to pitch pretty high. But the flight director actually gives you real good guidance. And then, then you just you just roll with it. Already crossing twenty four thousand feet. Europe being covered in ATC coverage and we're flying down here with nothing. There's a little bit on the east coast of Africa going on, but what's happening here? There's a convoy of planes here. Where's this guy flying to? Oh, he's flying not too far away from us, actually. So we have some uh, that some traffic down here in Africa, just not that much. There's some.
altitude.
Good morning, sweetheart. How are you? Flight's wonderful so far. We had a flawless takeoff, a nice little 180 degree left turn climb. We're sitting pretty. It is uh, nearing sunset, I guess. It's probably about 6.30 p.m. local time. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a real good flight so far. The, the plane is just so nice to fly, like, it really is. <clears throat> We're on Batson, but there's no ATC coverage around anywhere. Um, which is fine. I, I feel like this way I get to rack up the hours on the network, even even though there's nobody actually... I'm not technically doing anything on it, but... Should have a nice evening in approach, about 45 minutes till we land, probably about 30 minutes before we descend. Oh, you got to play on the swings today? That's awesome, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, this, um, man, I had a lot of fun flying that plane yesterday, though. No, I don't think they have any benefit. In fact, if anything, that might be a disadvantage to me because it will make it seem as more, if I'm more experienced than I really am. If, like, if I put in hundreds of hours without any actual, uh, ATC stuff, it will appear as though I have experience. But, no, but I like to turn it on because it's low pressure in this scenario, and you never know if it does actually, like, I don't know. I mean, a, a controller could hop onto the center for, for this region at any time. I just wanted to get used to having it on, basically. Because at least in that way, the, the technical sides of, like, having the app open and doing the right thing, like, that will just be second nature. And we one less thing to, to potentially worry about. It's kind of nice. Probably won't do an actual VATSIM flight until next week, like during the week, because I think this weekend I've got a few other games that I need to play. So this is probably my last flight uh, until next week. But this gets us a little bit further into, um, well it's still technically West Africa. You can see on this map here that, you know, we're, we're right here. We're between Gabs and DFFD. So it's just a straight line across that we're flying. There's actually a couple other air, airplanes around that have destinations in um, in Africa somewhere. So there's there's a couple in our sector, but nothing close enough to uh, to worry about. Though, how fast is this guy flying? Oh, it's an A3320. He's flying quite fast. How fast are we flying? Yeah, we've got a we've got a headwind. Twenty knot, twenty knot, twenty knot headwind. So that's uh, that's gonna make it a little bit easier in the future, and then next week we'll uh, hop on and try to do like a nice simple flight somewhere in Canada, like I mentioned before. Um, for now, I'm just really just getting some more practice with this jet too because it had been a little while it's funny I mean this concepts are all the same but every airplane has got its slight little nuances that you forget about if you're not flying it for a while plus I really wanted to get some more stickers on the outside of my plane you know I make some progress with the uh the world tour eventually. Africa has got a lot of countries in it, um, and I'm looking forward to heading down to South Africa at some point. It flies so smooth, yeah. It's not quite as hands-off as the Airbus. But on the other hand, it's also a little bit simpler to get started up. There's a lot less things to do. Plus it has VNAV. It honestly makes the landings, or not even the landings, the descents, makes the descent so nice. 
That's the goal. Stickers all over the airplane. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of race cars, I guess sometime next week I gotta actually try to do some practice laps in France for the Grand Prix, because I would like to actually race that one and see if I can actually get through a race without wrecking. Which is easier said than done for some reason. By the way, uh, whenever you want to do some more Destiny in the evening for like a bit, I'm, I'm down to, uh, to hop on. Like even tonight if you want to, for like an hour or so. Let's make a bit more progress in your game. Get you into the tower, because you haven't really gotten there yet. You're still kind of stuck in the on the railroad tracks for the story, so... I'm happy to uh, fire it up this evening if you want. Got lightning happening here now. Sometimes there's lightning in areas that just doesn't seem like there should be. By the way, if I lean out the window, I can really get a good look at the stickers on the door. Oh, this is such a beautiful angle to for a screenshot. Come on, hold steady, hold steady, hold steady. There we go. Screenshot time. This is a nice view, actually. You can see the contrails that they added recently to the game right here. People were super stoked about that. Not for their own plane, but I guess you can that way see contrails of other planes. <laughs> I like the fresh air at 41,000 feet. I think the difficulty is actually... I feel like we can tweak it. There's there's enough options that I think we can tweak it. I don't know what you have yours set to. We'll see how France goes. France should be a much easier track, though. Because I remember, like, the first couple of races, we did pretty well. I mean, I, I, I have a tendency to rear-end cars in front of me, but that's on me. That's not the game's fault. Yeah, no, I don't like those either. The walls, they, they make it really rough. So I feel like any of the other stuff, like when there isn't walls and it's just the size of the track, like if you're not 100% accurate, you know, you don't, the, the benefit is that you don't wreck your car. Because it makes it just really difficult. Um, makes it really difficult when you nudge the wing just a tiny bit and it basically ruins it for the rest of the race. Which I understand is realistic, though there's probably a way to... I think there is a way to turn down damage as well. I think I already had it a fair bit down. Definitely wasn't set to realistic. Pixar at flight level 120. That's in the. and then down to 2600 feet. Okay. Wait. You liked Baku?
I had a really hard time in Baku. But that's because I... It's also a challenge to learn how to slow down in these races, because the tendency is just to go all out all the time, which of course is not, not what the real drivers would do. No, 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 Baku was the one that I didn't make it one lap. The race, the track that we won at was, I think it was Melbourne, the very first one of the season in Australia. Melbourne was a nice track. Melbourne or Spa? Did we not race Spa as well? I'm not sure. All right, have fun on the swings, Sean.
Looks like it's going to be a dark landing after all. The sun went down quickly when you're flying away from it at 400 knots. Okay, Christian, what's up, man? Just about to reach the top of our descent here. And yeah, it's starting to get dark. You just, you missed the sunset. We are flying, this is, I'm doing like a, a world tour, so... This is the CJ4. Yeah, it's a beautiful game. Uh, we're currently on uh, autopilot at flight level 410. Just a couple nautical miles away from the top of our descent, then we'll start descending down to 12,000 feet using VNAF, which is wonderfully done in this plane. Super easy. I was hoping that it was going to be a little bit uh, brighter still, but I chose to fly with live time and live weather, and we had a nice, like, 6 p.m. local time takeoff, but it uh, is getting dark quickly. Yeah, I love doing this in live time and live weather. Sometimes live time is not super convenient, depending on, you know, where in the world. Because I don't like to fly in the, at night all the time, but... So our top of descent, uh, I'm going to set the altitude to... I'm going to go set it down all the way down to 2000, which is past all of our constraints. And then engage VNAV. which is armed, so once we reach the top of descent, it should start pitching down. We'll pull back on the throttle. And this work entitled mod will do an actual really good job of hitting these constraints. So this waypoint ticks out here as a constraint of 12,000 feet, and it will actually hit that. POD is flashing in the PFD over there, and there's VPath, so. All the controls. All right, well, let's start with, with this thing here. Um, this guy here is the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Which is really cool because not only does it have, thanks for the sub by the way, not only does it have, what is this, five, six, six actual throttles, they can be configured with different pieces. So, you know, right now it's configured with a speed brake, two engines, and a flap lever. Um, but it comes with, you know, it comes with additional handles for different configurations so depending on what kind of plane I'm flying I can just pop these off put the appropriate ones on then it's got a full autopilot panel with all the buttons some switches it has gear lever and a trim wheel um, I used to I don't actually use these buttons a whole lot because I have other ones that I prefer 
Then to go along with the Honeycomb Bravo is the Honeycomb Alpha, the yoke. It also has some switches. Like, those two really is all you'd ever need, unless you're crazy like me. Um, then I have three Logitech panels here, the radio stack, a multifunction display, and a switch panel. And the nice thing about those is I use a piece of software called SPAD.next, which lets me configure all of these to do whatever I want outside of the simulator. So I just do it in that software, and it's, and it's really great. And then this, this thing over here on the right with all the knobs, all the dials, is a Behringer X-Touch Mini, which is really meant for, like, media, like MIDI stuff, for DJs, essentially, for people who are mixing music. But because it has eight dials on it and 16 buttons it's super handy for this stuff so I can actually have different dials for heading and altitude and speed and, and range like so I can just use this one knob here to change the range of my displays in the cockpit without having to use you know the mouse and, and doing all that because using the mouse is cumbersome And then I have a little monitor here that's just a little ex external monitor for my chat and vPilot and a stream deck underneath for some extra buttons. And I have a small, I have an iPad over here that's uh, the thing on the screen in the bottom right. It's just a, you know, just a map so I can keep an eye on where I am and for charts and such. It's great. I love that. I mean, I started with just a... No, no, don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. <laughs> I started with a Logitech setup. I bought the Logitech Yoke and Throttle Quadrant, like as a bundle. And that worked great. Uh, the thing about this Yoke is a fair bit more expensive, but it's a, li it's a little bit more smooth. Um, but when I, I started with the, the Logitech stuff, and the Logitech stuff is great. Because for me, like, I, I bought all that stuff, just the basic things, because I wasn't sure if I was actually really going to enjoy it or not, right? So I wasn't going to spend money on all of this until I knew that I liked it. And then once I got hooked on it, I just started adding and adding and adding and replacing. And so... And we can see, I think, that bit of light ahead of us here. That's got to be our destination city. The other thing that's super helpful if you don't have that yet is a track IR thing, which is just this thing that attaches to your headset so that you can move your head around the cockpit, which is highly recommended. Just makes all that stuff a lot, a lot easier. That, that, I would say, you should get right away, because you're going to want that. Track IR 5. It's just a little attachment that hooks up to the side of the, uh, the headset. It just clips onto it. It's like a... Probably hard to see, but it's a little clip that you just pop onto the side of the headset. It has some IR LEDs in it. And then there is a little... Uh, receiver sitting on top of my monitor that basically just looks for those lights to move and the cool thing is it has you know full depth so I can like lean forward I can I can rotate my head around I can stick it out the window Yeah, I've actually had this track IR thing for many years. I used to, I first bought it uh, years ago when I started playing uh, Euro Truck Simulator. Um, any kind of driving game, it's super helpful for, because, you know, making turns and stuff, looking around. So having it for the flight simulator was just an, an added bonus.
The only thing better than head tracking is to do it in VR, which I also do sometimes. But doing it in VR, you, you, you can't see all this physical stuff, so it becomes a lot more problematic. Hey, hey, Rohan. Thanks for the follow. You kind of lose out in virtual reality because you don't get to you don't get to see all those things. Plus, it's really hard on the system. I have a pretty powerful computer, but VR is still it's still it's still pretty rough. Plus, you got a lot of small instruments and screens to look at. So, uh, where are we at here? Twenty six thousand feet. We're looking pretty good. Always with the lightning strikes, so at least they provide some nice lighting. You should see some of the stuff that some people do. Um, some people that built like real home cockpits with multiple monitors, and then they actually get like they build out full dashes with screens and everything built in. Like all my stuff is, um, all these things are just mounted to a board. So when I'm done flying, I just pick up this whole thing, I lift it up and move it out of the way. Um, so that that makes a that makes it a little bit easier to break it down. The sweeps raid. Oh boy. All the follows. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, some people build... I don't have the physical space to build anything bigger than this. Also seems a little bit crazy, but it, it, it does make it... Like, having all the buttons makes, makes a huge difference. Hello, Yisman15. I'm <laughs> be off for 15 minutes. I see that. I see that. Well, we got about 15 or 20 minutes until we land this thing in the dark. But I actually think this... Uh, I think this... This landing should be fairly straightforward. It's an RNAV approach, and the CJ4 is very good at doing everything automatically. Hello, Mushi999. Louis, Alexander, hello. I'm well. How are you guys? Dennis, how's it going? Wave, wave, wave. Hello. Smoky bear, nice. Oh man, I'm just so disappointed now that it is dark outside. You can't see very much. Should we change the time? to roll back a couple of hours so we can see something. We're not going to crash. I don't need my hands. The plane's flying itself right now. Roll back the time. Let's see. That It shouldn't... Uh, it shouldn't impact things too much. Oh, there we go. Let's let me just make sure that the airplane's still flying okay. Looks like it. Alright, that's a bit better. We can see a little bit more of the lovely African landscape here. West Africa, I guess. Yeah, this these are the these are the, the beauty shots right here. Thank you for the follows, everybody.
eighteen thousand. Let me just check my uh, my my actual checklist. I know the approach on this plane is pretty simple. Yeah, probably don't even need it. Oh man, here come the giveaways. <laughs> Uh, who is the passenger? That's a good question. I mean, if we look in the back, there is, uh, nobody in the back. We're just flying for ourselves. But yeah, I would say that I think it's, it seems appropriate that Christian would be sitting in the back somewhere there, wheeling and dealing. It's a pretty, it's a pretty swanky cabin. It's a pretty, pretty comfy plane. It's also like a very smooth flying plane. Um, it's a rocket ship. It takes off like crazy, but then it flies really smooth. Sitting in the back giving subs, exactly. <laughs> uh, we are flying to... Um, I can show you on, a, on the map. Let me make this map big real quick. Um, Burkina Faso, which is... Part of my world, too. So this is uh, at a high level, West Africa. So we left Mali, and we're on our way to Burkina Faso. And then I think the next leg, which will be like my next stream, will be south down to the Ivory Coast. So that's where we're, where we're at right now. I think this is the 46th country that I've flown to on my world tour so far. I started in the UK, in London in the UK and went all the way over to North America, down through South America, and then crossed the Atlantic over to West Africa. So I just go from one capital city to the next, essentially. And the flight attendant... Actually, not in this plane. If I was flying a different plane, I could put a co-pilot in. Let's turn our seatbelt signs on. May I have your attention, please? At this time, please comply with the illuminated seatbelt and no smoking signs. In other words, Christian, please sit down if you're walking around back there. You're twerking in the back. It's quite a bit of clouds up there, but I think that's outside of where we're going to be landing. We should be able to avo avoid that weather. See, this is what I love about this plane. We're supposed to hit 12,000 feet at this waypoint here. Tixot. And we're going to hit that exactly. We're at 13,000 right now. to turn left. For our approach, well, this is our arrival. That next constraint should be 2,600 feet. Yeah, it is exactly. Perfect. If you crash the plane, the screen just goes black. It just goes black and says um, you have you have overstressed the aircraft, I think, or you've you've crashed or something like that. It's not it's not exciting. 
Uh, In-flight drink service was just coffee today. It's still early in the morning. When I fly in the evening, it's usually a beer. Uh, but at this moment, uh, we're on our approach, so drink services have been suspended for the moment. In fact, we can go and... Uh, that's not it. Let's do our passenger briefing to tell the Christian to sit down. So we're below 10,000 feet. We've got the landing lights on. We need to slow down a bit because we are going too fast. I do not have an F-16. I think there is an add-on F-16 for the flight simulator, but I do not have that. Um, I do need to set up our arrival here. I have no idea what the actual conditions are at our airport, so we're just going to assume that it's calm winds and 20 degrees, which is close enough. So we can send the V speed. So approach speed, 111 knots. That should be good enough for us. Hey, Tomb Slayer. You came, at, you came during the party time. Can we see any of the city yet over in uh, that direction? There are some signs of uh, civilization down there. I, I, I don't know if I can fly a plane in real life. No, I, I can't. I've never done it. Um, I feel like at this point I know enough about the systems that uh, if I had to take over because the pilot got sick, I could probably push the right buttons in the right order at the right time. Flying the dash. Which dash are you talking about? Oh yeah, if zombies are coming, I'm flying. I, I think I've got enough. I can do it. If there's zombies chasing me, I can fly a plane in real life. No problem. No, no, this is the CJ4. The working title mod of the CJ4. Um, did they release the Dash 8 for a flight simulator? I didn't think they that uh, that existed. I know there's a team working on one. Thank you for the follow, everybody. Follows and the subscription gifts from Christian. Thanks. Looks like you stole the fucking head off a plane. <laughs> like this stuff? A little bit. Alright, let's see. We're flying at 210, so that's a nice, nice slow speed. There, okay. I gotcha. Yeah, no, this is the, the working title, CJ4. Um, I forget which team. I think, is it is it PDG or some, some, some third-party team is working on a dash uh, that should be coming soon-ish that I think people are looking forward to quite a bit. So maybe that will be good. Oh, mushy, I don't know, over the over the few years, uh, not years, months, um, there's probably about 1500 bucks or so sitting in front of me in, in various controls and stuff. I overpaid for some of the stuff because of pandemic prices. Hey, Pateridactyl, Pat, Pateridactyl, nice. Okay, I think... We should be safe now to activate approach mode.
So, uh, approach LMAF and glide path armed. Good. Should still be getting down to 2600. Uh, let me have a quick look at my chart here. So we're actually on this chart now. Light path happens at FD503, which is... That freaked me out. I just saw the plane tilt in the, out of the corner of my eye. It's supposed to. It's doing what it's supposed to. Still freaked me out, though. Oh, we're on glide path already? That's one thing I haven't set up yet is minimums. Uh, minimums. 1350, let's see if I can get that programmed in real quick. Laps 15. Do you put custom badging next to chatters? Like, uh, I, I think that has to do with uh, subscriptions now. The setup, yeah. So, uh, Mushi got a gifted subscription, and subscribers get that little icon. So, if you're an affiliate, like I am on Twitch, then you can you can set your own little icon. All right, let's go gear down. There's the runway in sight. We're on the glide path. We are all configured. We can go full flaps in a moment. This the simulator is amazing. It is really well done. It has some some issues, but overall, it's extremely well done. Totally worth getting into if you have any interest in this kind of stuff at all. It's absolutely worth it. There's our runway over there. A quick look outside the aircraft to make sure... Oh, that's pretty. The sun goes down really fast here in Africa. We're a little bit off, uh, off the line there. Autopilot. Assume you're going to nudge us over just a bit. Altitude. Thank you for the follow, Draco. Uh, you should keep me on the... Oh, okay, we actually haven't hit the glide slope point yet here. It's going to be the next one. Yeah, yeah, Drago. You can you can go into your affiliate settings somewhere there, and you can uh, you can configure what you want your subscriber badge to look like. So sometimes the autopilot systems don't work really well. I'm a little curious because we should be. There we go. We are slowly descending down to the runway, and also lining ourselves up a little bit. I'm just massaging the throttles now to keep us at around 111 knots. Uh, no, you can't. You, there's some add-ons where you can put, um, actually, I think somebody modeled some passengers, but you have to get, like, an add-on. By default, you, you cannot put passengers in the plane itself. Thanks for the follow, Betty. Yeah? All right, so we are fully configured. Full flaps. I don't know, a screenshot here for the for the album. Flying at a good speed, lined up. There's quite a bit of crosswind, which is why we're kind of crabbing our way in here a little bit. Um, 
feel like I'm probably forgetting something because you guys are all on that slight bit of oh, This is kind of a nice approach, actually. Look at that little lake there. It's very pretty. Two white lights, two red lights, which is exactly what we want. Um, we'll turn the autopilot off shortly. We should have a pretty decent landing here. We've got a long runway. We're coming in at a really good speed. Coming in at a good, uh, good casual slope here. We want to make sure that we land somewhat softly so that Christian doesn't spill his drink in the back. This is still all autopilot at this point. Okay, uh... Minimums, minimums. Autopilot. Autopilot is off. I am now flying this aircraft. Remember that this runway is long and we got a lot of room. Perfect landing. Well, this doesn't have thrust reversers, I keep forgetting, but we do have speed brakes. I always forget about the speed brakes. I'm just going to roll down to the end of the runway. Not quite on the center line, but you know what? I will take it. Shit, 100 bits, thank you. We are officially on the ground. Let's go find ourselves a parking spot. <laughs> You're going to secure the area before uh, before letting Christian disembark. I uh, can get the flight director off. Did that turn the autopilot back on for some reason. Okay. So we should have an actual uh, taxi chart here as well. Oh, there's no there's no turn off back here. Cool. We're just going to have to turn around in the middle of the runway. Yeah, I'm working my way up towards uh VATSIM ATC. I'm technically flying on this VATSIM network where there are real uh, air traffic controllers, but uh, there is no coverage. Look at that view. Damn. Those clouds. We'll turn around here and we'll go park at a gate.
Alright, this looks like a decent place to turn off, find a spot to park. We'll just park next to these little guys here. Oh yeah, there's a there's a group of uh, people right there. This guy can wave us in. Of course, this guy's going to get himself run over because they just like to wander around at random times. There we go. Parking brake on. Turn the climate control off. And that's pretty much it. Go shut down our engines. Yeah, not bad. I mean, it's a small airport, so some of the taxi stuff here is just a little bit wonky because there's not a lot of it there, but... Um, oh, those clouds look amazing. <laughs> From this airport, I can't fly the Boeing 747, but I can fly an Airbus. If you want, I can fire up an Airbus flight or something. Um... I think this runway may be too short. Uh, actually, let me check. Seven forty. I wouldn't even know how to start the seven forty-seven. What's the length of this runway? Oh, it's nine thousand eight hundred feet. Actually, it's long enough for an Airbus. Problem is, to fly an Airbus, I have to switch a whole bunch of settings around. How about I'll do an Airbus flight in my on my next stream, Christian? Um, so a heads up for those that subscribed and follow. Now I also stream a a, a D and D game every um, Saturday. So if you get like a notification of us uh, playing D and D on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time, just a heads up. Airbuses are Airbus is a nice to fly. This is as close to a jet as you get in this game that I have. Mushi, this I don't have any other other jets. Um, I can try to put an Airbus on here. The Airbus is really fun to fly, actually. Let me see. Um, what do I need to do to, to make that happen? I gotta plug something in. I gotta plug in my Airbus joystick, Christian. Default, yeah, don't change any of that. Um, let's see, I need to go to SPAD and I need to switch to my Airbus profile. Let's see if we can. Just uh, temporarily, we can take off in this Airbus and we're going to departure runway departure airport is the one that we just landed in okay we'll go with the Air Canada um, they only have small ramps okay So we won't even file a flight plan. We're just going to go fly. Yeah? Let's do that. Let's do uh, live weather, but we'll make it a little bit 
we'll do it in the morning. Oh, I haven't been to Hawaii yet. I still got to do it. Honestly, flying to Hawaii is a little bit boring because you're just flying over open ocean for a long time. We'll do a quick takeoff in the Airbus. I don't have a, a lot of time, so I won't be landing it. But I'll show you the Airbus. And we'll, we'll get it started up, and we'll... I should do an actual... I mean, I can do a stream to Hawaii sometimes. I think it would be like, what's the... How many hours is it from like the closest point somewhere in California? It's still a significant amount of time. So, <laughs> here's this our Air Canada Airbus. Uh, I don't know yet, Mushi. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be streaming D and D. I'll probably be streaming again on Monday, uh, probably around this time, probably around 11 a.m. Pacific West Coast time, something like that. If you guys want to see me fly to Hawaii, I can do that at that point. We can figure that out. Um, the Airbus is the Airbus takes some doing to fire up. There's a few things involved in making it actually start. First being the uh, oh crap! I got all my buttons all Walter. Um, okay, we need batteries. Two batteries. We have external power. Oh, this is broken. No, it's not. off and this thing takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time just to fire this thing up. Because you have to actually, like, it's very realistic. You have to deal with getting the power going, so getting the APU, the auxiliary power unit, up and running. I watched countless hours of, well not hours, I watched a lot of YouTube videos just trying to get this thing flying. that set yeah <laughs> girls waiting in a way we will do a takeoff from here and then uh, I will I'm gonna have to arrange a Hawaii stream we could set one up for Monday evening maybe or Monday afternoon or like what uh, what's a good time for everybody because I'm just trying to think, like a good flight to Hawaii. Um, let's have a look in the map here. There's Hawaii, so I think we could do we could do something like San Francisco to Hawaii, or maybe San Diego. San Diego would be kind of cool. San Diego is one of the few American airports I've actually been in in person. I flew down to San Diego a couple of years ago. Maybe we'll do a flight from San Diego to Honolulu in in an Airbus. Set up a nice flight like that.
Okay, um... Fuel pumps on. Can anybody even push us back? Oops. Around. I don't even know if we can get pushback services here. Apparently we can, from a fake. Fake invisible tug. So while that's going, we should be able to get an engine start. Sweeps us here. Uh, somebody has made an aircraft carrier, I think. By by default, no, it does not. Um, like the standard uh, thing is, no, there is no no aircraft carrier. But somebody's made one. Like a lot of these things in this game, uh, if they don't exist, somebody will have made one. That's one engine running. Those wheel steering disc. I don't even know what that's about. Okay, so we have got. We're running on. Should be running on engine power now. Yes, we are. Uh, yeah, you can simulate engine failures and stuff. You have to, like, specify them in the simulator, though. Like, you have to set them up for your flight. It's not going to do it automatically. Um, hey, Sean, you missed a whole big party, man. There are people here. They've convinced me to do a takeoff in the Airbus. That's all I'm going to do, a takeoff, and then I think on Monday we're going to do a flight from San Diego to Honolulu. People want to go to Hawaii. So I'm thinking of doing that Monday. Actually, maybe I'll do it on Sunday. Maybe Sunday is the better, better day for that. Um, I just TCAS standby. I thought I just changed the TCAS. Oh, TCAS. If you available, that should go away. I don't know what this steering disconnect is about. I don't remember ever seeing that. I think we should be in a position to taxi now. Well, we just did Iceland yesterday. 
<laughs> oh, blackout in your city on Sunday? Okay, well, maybe Monday it is then. <laughs> maybe Monday is the better better uh, day to do that then. Alright, let's see if we can taxi down to the edge of the runway. Oh, my... Okay, it is working. No, it's not, is it? Okay, but there is something wrong with the nose wheel steering. I don't know what that is, actually. Where is that? Is that a new thing that they added? I feel like they added something new. And I don't know... what to do with that. Nose wheel steering disconnect. Like it's have it's giving me a hard time actually turning. Like an impossibly hard time. Uh, no, I'm not in VR. I'm using something called Track IR. It's a little attachment I put on my headset. I don't think I can actually fly this plane right now. I need to look up what this uh, what this thing means that it's complaining us about. Uh, complaining about. Because it's not. Uh, it's not. Of course, it's not responding to my rudder commands. Well, it is, but like very, very slowly. The only way I can seem to do this is by turning full left brake. Okay. What is that? Google to the rescue. Oh, I can change this now? Oh, that's good. That's an old... I mean, that's what it feels like. I'm just trying to find... Trying to find something in, uh, in the fly-by-wire Discord, maybe. Now, I, I did do, like, an abbreviated startup, so maybe I missed something. Nose wheel steering desk. Oh, that's what it is. There we go. It thought that we had a tug connected. That will uh, that will of course do it. So it basically thought that you know we had something pulling us. Now I can turn. Good. Now we can taxi over there. We'll do a quick takeoff. Uh, flap set to one. We do a takeoff config test. Slots not in takeoff configuration.
Now we're good. Yeah, we'll fly a little, uh, we'll fly a little turn. The Airbus is a lot of fun to fly, actually. I'm actually really looking forward to flying to Hawaii with this thing. That should be really cool. Lights. Let's set ourselves an altitude of 10,000 feet. Um, we'll get all that armed. It's probably not going to do things super nicely for me because I didn't program in a flight plan. Cabin calls. Alright, well, let's screw it. Let's just take off. Got enough of an idea of what I'm doing here. Got the engine stabilized at 50%. It's good, and full power. Off the brakes, keep the nose down for a bit. Knots. That should be rotate right here. There we go. Positive rate of climb. Gear comes up. Flaps up. Autopilot. And I want... Selected heading mode. So, come on, get into lever climb. There you go. I'm going to be climbing at uh, 250 knots, which the autopilot should do. I've got it in heading mode at the moment. It could have been the flaps, Sean. It could have been the the gear, though, too. The gear in the Airbus makes amazing sounds when it comes up and down. It sounds so cool. There we go. We'll fly a heading of 360, of 000. Straight north. We 
Get some uh, cool camera angles here. This one I like. There's also one if we want to sit in the back, look out the window, enjoy the flight. We can do that. So doing this flight to Hawaii is going to be pretty sweet. Um, I'm thinking we'll do that on Monday around this time. We'll start at like 11 in the morning on San Diego time. Because actually, let me see, that would be kind of interesting to see if uh, we might actually have some VATSIM coverage at that time. Probably not during the day, but it's possible. Actually, right now, San Diego does have everything. Do we want to fly to Honolulu, or do we want to fly to the uh, the other island? I'm thinking Honolulu, right? See, I knew you'd never sit next to the window. I, I did not really like flying. Um, but now that I've done a bunch of this flight sim stuff, I feel a lot more uh, comfortable with it. I can look out the other window, too. And this plane just flies itself now. Like, it's even easier than the other one because it has an auto throttle, so there's there's very little to do. Uh, set a speed. Actually, it's in managed speed mode, so it's, it's holding it at 250, which is the speed limit below 10,000 feet. We're climbing very slowly up to 10,000 because we're not in a proper cruise, uh, not in a proper climb mode here, but that's okay. <laughs> So how does Monday at uh, 11 o'clock Pacific sound? Because I think that sounds like we could we could do that. That sounds like a fun idea. I will file the paperwork and get it set up. Let's make a turn. Time for you, Sean. That's all that matters. There we go. It has been decided. We'll have a, a roughly a boarding time of 11 a.m. Pacific time on Monday. Yeah, these are nice, nice camera angles. Especially during a turn. I have no idea what heading we're flying at now, but it's all pretty flat here, so I just spin the dial until we, we turn. actually curious. This could be... I wonder if there is something I can do here. Challenge-wise... Uh... Oh, there are like no airports in range of anything. Actually, I wonder if I can...
Um, oh, this only has... It does have ILSs. Let's see if I can actually... It may be possible... to get us back to the airport. Maybe. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely get low fuel. If you, uh, if you run out of stuff, absolutely. Things can go bad pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, most of the time, though, you'll have plenty of fuel. Uh, so we are there. Let's call him... It's not showing up on the display, which is a bit odd. Oh, now it's showing up. Welcome to the channel. I'm sure I butchered your name. I apologize for that. Uh, where are you trying to take me, autopilot? Where are you trying to take me? Let's see if I can... Uh Duplicate names. We're really just screwing around at this point. I really want to get up there. No, not runway. That's definitely not good. We go direct to Ampec. That's better. Let's see if we can bring this bird down. It's going to be challenging because it's like none of this is configured properly at all.
But to be fair, it doesn't have... Uh, it doesn't have VNAF, this plane, so we have to tell it to descend ourselves, which I think I've just done. We'll give it a try. I actually think our chances are about 60% of being able to land this thing. With a 75% chance of running out of runway. So we'll actually be flying right past the airport, and then we're going to spin back around. I can see the airport over there. It would be very tempting just to descend now and try to land from here, but it would also be... That's what I used to do, and it would absolutely result in disaster. One zero zero nine is the actual. Well, I was pretty close with guessing. Actually looking we're actually not looking too bad we should be at 2600 by that waypoint we have 19 nautical miles to go we're at 7400 so we need to descend about 5,000 times 3 is 15 miles okay we're good we should be able to make it Try to land here, and, uh, and then I will promise that uh, Monday's flight to Hawaii will be a little bit more organized. This one was just off the cuff because Christian wanted to see the Airbus. This thing is actually very quiet. It's it's surprisingly quiet. There's our airport. I'm gonna fly past it and then hook around. And the key will be hopefully to capture a an a localizer for lateral navigation and a glide slope for vertical navigation. Let's give it another level of flaps here.
I actually suspect that we are far too slow, far too early, but that's all right. It's better to kind of crawl in than, uh, than the opposite. Don't really need the terrain radar on here. There's uh, there isn't really any terrain around. It just makes the the ND harder to read. You enjoy when I'm flying near mountains? Is that because of the risk associated with it and the turbulence? Or do you just enjoy the scenery? The scenery is kind of cool too, it's just very different. the auto throttle to keep us going. See, I'm always conflicted about Calgary. Is that, does Calgary, there's a lot of nothing around Calgary, but then there are also the Rockies, so is it just that you enjoy seeing something other than what you see in Calgary, which is just flat land? Can we get an approach? Not yet, okay. Well, we'll see. I mean, we're in a position now where if I had to hand land it, I think I could. All right, let me sh let me f shortcut the flight plan a little bit here. Let's go direct to Potom. Looks all kinds of unsafe, but I'm guessing we're not actually going to get a proper instrument approach going here. Where is the airport from here? It's over in that direction. Can't really see it at this altitude now. Oh, Banff is beautiful, yeah. Love Banff, especially in the winter. It's just, it's such a, it's like the typical Canadian experience. Banff and then Jasper nearby, both of which are really nice. Alright, let's get spoilers, armed, landing gear down to come, flaps to full to come, cabin check, we'll do that in a minute. Auto brake set to low. Once we make this turn, we'll drop the landing gear and go flaps full. I don't think we're getting any approach mode here. In that case, let's uh, 
set our altitude to about 1300, 1400, which is the runway, I think. 1300 is the runway elevation, roughly. Okay, I can see the runway now. We'll, we'll keep, we'll, uh, we'll keep our faith for some sort of uh, glide slope here. When you move in and live on the futon, yeah, we'll have to make a trip to the Rockies. Sounds like a plan. All right, here comes the landing gear. I love this sound effect. It sounds like an explosion. Flaps full. Yeah, I just don't think we're gonna get... A localizer. See what happens at this next waypoint. If we get nothing, we're going to switch to uh, selected altitude, which will descend us. We'll still manage the speed for us, which is nice. Okay, no approach. All right, we'll do this manually. Select an altitude. Open descent. Alright, autopilot is disengaged. We are just going to try to land this ourselves now. I still don't really see any pappy lights. I'm trying to Under the boat. figure out what we need. I feel like we're low. I impressed myself with that one. We'll just go over the grass a little bit here. Yeah, that's actually that 
I'm really happy when I'm able to do a landing like that that was not at all really lined up quite right. We didn't get we didn't get the ILS stuff, so it was basically a manual. I mean, I used a system to help out, but it was basically a manual landing at that point, so it's pretty cool. Very happy with that. Let's go park her up here and and then we'll call it a day. All the things off, off, switches off, off, off. And we got her all shut down. So, uh, first of all, thank you, Christian, for bringing over a bunch of folks. That was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully those of you that showed up and are new enjoyed and you come back uh, I will be setting up a flight for Monday 11 a.m. and we're gonna fly from San Diego to Honolulu possibly with real-world multiplayer ATC guidance um, but we'll see whether or not that's available at that time on the VATSIM network I can land a plane without assistance, but can't make one lap in an F1 car without rearing a car. Yep, that's that's my life. I can fly it, but, but that's because there's not a lot of things to hit in the air. You really only have to avoid the ground. Everything else is just free open space. But yes, thank you, Christian. Thank you, everyone, for showing up and subscribing and following. And hopefully, we'll catch you again on Monday. Until then, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye, everyone.